Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to our latest webcast that we're bringing you from Travel Weekly. It's a little bit of a different setup today, as to what you might be used to, but I'm joining uh, the wonderful Antonio Paradiso and Steve Williams from MSC on board their brand new ship, MSC World Europa in Doha. So good morning, gentlemen. How are you? Well, very well. It's uh, quite warm here in Doha. <laughs> So such a shock uh, compared to London uh, yesterday. So the sun is shining, and we're on board our brand new baby. Uh, she's big. She's a big she, baby. She's a big baby. She's cool. Uh, she's exciting. I think she's got everything. So uh, we she, we arrived. Um, oh, but I mean midnight last night. I think we've seen five percent of the ship so far. So I mean this is as new for us as it is for you. Um, and we started looking around this morning, and I think what, what I've noticed, Lucy, is the sheer amount of new venues on board this ship. Um, totally new venues for MSC, um, lots of new dining options, lots of new bar options. So, mm. I mean, the guests are just going to be amazed. I'm amazed. I'm utterly blown away by this ship already. All right. Well, let's so look, we I, five percent. I want you to tell us all about some of those features, and maybe we can have a little wonder uh, we can. See some stuff. Do you but, want first, to follow but hold on, just before. Oh, we... actually, yeah. Sorry. So, just because this what, this idea was introduced for the very first time on uh, MSC Bellissima, you know, the ship that we launched in the UK. So the concept of the English pub. So as you can see, the English pub is just getting bigger and bigger. And uh, officially, the English pub uh, becomes, you know, the first microbrewery at sea for MSC. So you can see where all the production takes place. But following on the success of the English pub across all the, um, uh, the MSC Bellissima, Grandiosa and Virtuosa ships, you know, we've just got bigger. So now it stands across two different decks. And upstairs, there is the um, gin bar, um, which I've been up and had a quick look at this morning. And in there, um, our guests can distill their own gins um, in the little mix in the them, yes, um, And then if you follow around, You've got a pool table up there, you've got the darts area. So I think our British and Irish guests are going to love this area. Incredible. It looks amazing, guys. And I see you've got the football on already. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, and actually, just in front of the microbrewery, so this is the first lager, bitter, and pills to still buy seawater. Um, but what we've got is a large screen comes down in front of this. So you can watch the football, the Formula One, and the World Cup. And the World Cup. <laughs> and the World Cup. All right. Now, before we go and anywhere, guys, we just... a better name for our beer. So it's Oceanic Beer. Oceanic oh, beer. amazing. Guys, before we so go we, anywhere, we... before we go anywhere, just, just yes. remind people, MSC Europa, it's a big ship. It's got a really unique design. This is quite different for you, isn't it? You've got a really interesting bow. That amazing aft with the Y shape and the huge promenade. So I don't think we're going to see all that, but it's also groundbreaking for you because it's your first LNG ship as well, isn't it? So just tell us a bit about it. Indeed. So we have a really proud MSC World Europa is uh, the first of our ships, you know, being powered by LNG. So that will have uh, you know, a huge impact. Um, so it's just the beginning because all of our future ships now will be powered by LNG. So we all know that LNG is, at the moment, the latest and probably the best you know, uh, type of fuel uh, available. And uh, by in addition to that, it's not just about the LNG that we are using you know, to fuel the ship. There's also you know, the, the, the waste uh, recycling uh, treatments that we're doing on board, you know, the, the, the way we manage the water, the anti-fouling paint that we've used all around the ship. And uh, you were talking about design, um, design and about the lines of uh, MSC Europa. The best way to describe it probably is that it's like you're combining the MSC Virtuosa with uh, the MSC Seaside Club. Yes, yes, so, it looks like that at the back. Yeah. So you, you still got the indoor, all the you know all the wow factor from the indoor with the LED screen and uh, all the shops, all the boutiques. But then at the same time, half of the ship. Is all outdoors, so you get you know all the vibes, all the excitement that we already had on board of the seaside class ships. 
So it's basically the perfect complement you know, between these two different prototypes. And I think if you, if we walk and talk, we can show you exactly how that works yes. on okay, a couple great. of the venues, which are just down Almost here. <laughs> um, so the the Galleria that we're used to on the uh, Meraviglia car is significantly larger. Um, it's over three stories, and it's is pretty much twice as wide. Yes, um, 43 meters. Which meter offers side. us the opportunity for uh, a lot more choice, larger venues, a lot more venues. Uh, but let's let's walk this way, and I'll show you one of the um, bars, the Elixir cocktail bar, and also one of our restaurants, which has the alfresco um, dining as well, inside and out. Um, we're, we're still getting our bearings ourselves, so. Don't get lost, Steve. I know, I know. Love it already. We had a little oh, glimpse there of your amazing LED ceiling, which we now know so well on our uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. ship, yeah. ships. So, Lucy, this one is actually a kinetic ceiling. Oh. So, the difference is that it is one continuous uh, stream versus on the other ships where it's LED. Um, so the the detail, it's much crisper, much cleaner. And you can see the whales swimming above us. I love it. Okay. So let's, and as you can see, some of the restaurants that were already popular, like Hola, the the Mexican cantina, is is back again, just larger. The same thing with the butcher's cut, which is probably the number one choice oh, yeah. for our British customers, is back on board. And again, it's just a larger venue with more options. And this is, let's follow Steve. These, uh, are, these are three special these two venues, which are two brand new venues. Steve, are you going up my favorite staircase? Steve, is the staircase full of crystals? So I'm just going to show you uh, one of the new restaurants, which is Garden Kitchen which is a brand new concept with an open kitchen. And this is where they grow the microgreens actually in the restaurant. So you can see the, all the herbs and greens growing. We have a bit of tasting going on here as you yeah. can see. Maybe Lucy, you want to say hi, hi to Mr. Honorat. Lucy, yeah. excellent. Have a week Hey, Lucy. <laughs> hi, Johnny. How are you? I miss you. Where are you? I'm, I'm sorry I'm not with you, but we're recording this live, so you are going to be speaking you're to all our readers. On Travel Weekly, as we oh, Very good. So I cannot talk about our personal matters. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let's. Uh, I mean, uh, I hope that you can have uh, the time of very, very soon to come and visit this gorgeous ship. Uh, I'm so proud. Uh, there's a lot. I mean, on this ship, we serve no food, only herbs. That's a very unique uh, cuisine. Huh? So I but hope you will be very light. When you disembark, when you get off this ship. Yeah, but what, what about what about the other what about the other venues? There's about 13 different dining venues, isn't there? Uh, there That's is, where you can wait. There is everything, uh, everything. That's let's say you take your day off uh, from eating uh, in a way to eat to have a more uh, light uh, food. But then you can have your steakhouse, your teppanyaki, you can have your uh, fish restaurant and um, and much more. You can have your burger. You can have your, uh, whatever you want. You know, you can have your pizza. Obviously, the best pizza at sea with the best. But most oh, yes. of you are twenty-one bars. Uh, wow. You know, okay. And our own brewery, so you, you can really sure. enjoy yourself. So, Johnny, Johnny, have you been on the slide yet? Have you been on the venom drop? You know, I have it in a couple of, in two hours exactly. And, you know, I'm a little bit frightened. <laughs> I hope that I can, will not fly over uh, to the sea, you know. No, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, it seems that uh, everyone who has uh, tried that uh, has been thrilled, uh, you know, by, by the emotion. It's been very, very exciting. So I look forward. I'm waiting oh. for Mr. Norato to try it first, and then I'll go. Lucy, we'll get Antonio on there and we'll video you. Probably I'll do a live. Let's see. 
Brilliant. Oh, thank you. I love that we get a guided tour from the CEO. This is very good. Lucy, uh, we will be waiting for you and uh, for whoever is online uh, today. I mean, all our uh, uh, beloved UK agents. So we look forward to seeing you here on MSC World Europa. Oh, well, you've got a few with you, I believe. You've, you've taken some agents out for the naming, which is on Sunday, which sounds very exciting. Yes, we are. We are all very excited. Yes. Well, yeah. I wish you all, I wish you all the best. But you can stay with us on the tour. But I imagine we'll be busy. Thank you very much. So, as we were showing, the the whole the whole kind of concept of offering that seashore female revealia class, where we have the to go outside dining. Talking about yes. fresco dining, why don't we show how yeah. Doha looks like? You know, the World Cup is about to start in. Uh, Ah, uh, yeah. In less than a week. You can see spectacular Doha. So, Doha. Oh, what? <laughs> so, you know, it's a warm. Wow. You can see it's rather there warm. <laughs> it's very, very warm, Lucy. Oh, you're just making me jealous, but that's a lovely vista and what a lovely place to have a meal. It's a spectacular city. And obviously, this is. Doha is an embarkation port for us, um, as well as Dubai. So guests can choose whether they fly to Dubai or Doha to board the ship. They've got the brand new terminal here in Doha. Yeah. Um, obviously, direct connections from all over the UK and Ireland with Qatar um, that we flew out on yesterday. Fabulous airline. Uh, let's walk down this way. I want to show you one of the really cool bars, um, which is, again, another new bar, which is Elixir uh, Cocktail Bar. And again, you get that nice al fresco outside seating area, which obviously out here in the Arabian Gulf. I mean, what, it's their winter and what are we, 36, 37 degrees yes, today? Yes, I wouldn't call it al fresco because it's just as warm outside. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Now, hold on. Door is here. And this, we haven't sampled this yet because when we arrived last night, the bars were closed, so we haven't sampled any of the 21 bars yet. Hello, you're live to the Hi. UK. UK. Oh, I like this Scottish. Uh, I like the Collins, I love this, right? <laughs> so, your specialities in here are cocktails. We are a Mediterranean place. We grow with six four of the Mediterranean, vermouth and bitter. So, we make here, we infuse them. We make coffees and it's please for you. Fabulous. Yes, we all do here. We can't wait to try. We'll definitely love, check I love out. I love a cocktail. I love a cocktail, guys. I think I'll be in that bar. Yeah. Portugal. So basically they can do cocktails with ingredients uh, from uh, more than twenty-five countries. And some of the ingredients are actually available here. So basically. incredible. So as you can see, Lucy, there's a lot of uh, there's kind of an organic theme here, organic food, organic ingredients. So, uh, and if you've got time, Lucy, there's one more venue I think would be really great to see. I've just got, just off I've got well, this is this is like an exclusive for the UK that we're seeing it before anyone else. So I will keep going. Okay, follow follow me. <laughs> Let's see if we the talk guys. <laughs> Fortunately, we have ten minutes before we come online to have a quick check of things. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so opposite here, we have our new champagne bar called Fizz. Um, which I'm sure you would love, and many of our, our agents think that's good last. And then once again, Lucy, this has got, so you've got the champagne bar, but you can go outside, you've got the uh, Al Pesco outside. Oh, how lovely. So it's just very light, it's very airy, everything's very spacious, lots of nice seating areas, the incredible, incredible room. And then we're going to the um, okay, so then another outdoor area, so you can come out here and do your champagne in the lovely weather. And the Lucy, that's not the built-in door, so perfect. 
it's been built just to host, you know, more and more uh, cruise ships. So wow. uh, it's literally brand new. <laughs> I feel like I should be drinking a glass of pink fizz while we're doing the tour. <laughs> Indeed. Or this time of day, or maybe there's, something, there's something very special for, I think, particularly us British. We love our cup of tea, don't we? And we've introduced uh, a brand new venue called the Raj Polo Tea House. Oh, nice. A, a nod to our um, colonial Indian heritage. And it's quite special, um, absolutely beautiful. So you can come in here and have afternoon teas. Um, they brew in all the different kinds of teas. Um, oh, wow, that is so player. lovely. It's, it's absolutely spectacular. We've already been in there for a cup of tea, a very oh, good tea. <laughs> so I think Steve, this, I mean, Steve, yeah. that venue is yeah, beautiful. Yeah, but, but there's more than tea, so as you and can see from cakes, scones, yeah. cakes and uh, cookies. Lovely. So, guys, while we got you yes. in, it's a bit quiet, and yes. I've got you both. Um, so, you've got some travel agents out with you for the naming, haven't you, from the UK? You've taken some partners with you, is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah, they're en route. As we, we have some here, flew with us, but we have agents flying from Dublin, Edinburgh, Manchester, and London as we speak. Yes, you're right. There's been a lot on social media. Everyone's very excited <laughs> to be going, and I've been very jealous. All right, it's and Antonio, Antonio, you've um, we were interviewing you recently, and you were talking about how the UK market is now up in your top five source markets. It's become Indeed. so important for you. You've got about three thousand agents now selling MSC, so sounds great. And is there even more growth to come? Well, uh, there will always be more growth in our case uh, because, as you know, pretty much every year we launch a new ship or we introduce new itineraries. So uh, 2022 has been a rather interesting year and a record-breaking year for us, uh, uh, despite, you know, uh, the initial challenges. So the XUK piece is just growing stronger and stronger. And that's why, you know, we have the retours and then we're going to have MSC Arabia next winter, selling from Southampton. But what we're doing now is gradually, we're also increasing our efforts when it comes to flying crews. Because, you know, this year, we all know what happened in the UK. There were a few issues here and there with flights and airports yeah. and delays and cancellations. But now that things are getting uh, better, you know, we're starting to push more, you know, short, medium and long haul destinations. Um, so, of course, Dubai and the Arabian Gulf, I would say, because it's not uh, its not always about Dubai. The Arabian Gulf, especially with this ship, is uh, one of our probably the hottest destination at the moment. You may know that this ship will also be the base of uh, all the, you know, the England steams, you know, wags, yes. uh, <laughs> a.k.a. the wags, you know, during, uh, during the World Cup. So this ship will be... Uh, will become more and more popular during the World Cup. So you will see this ship basically many of those panoramic and aerial views, yeah. you know, in between, in between games. Uh, we've had an excellent season with Barbados, literally sold out <laughs> within, what, three to four months? Yeah, All of absolutely. our seats, all of our cabins. Uh, what we are trying to do now, and uh, I think Europa now will definitely give a boost, is increase again you know the flying cruise business to the med for example yeah because it because i think you told us that your ex uk business had represented about 70 percent of your of your business which is wonderful in many ways and of course you were there at the restart so i know you did a great job there but obviously you've got ships in these fantastic places all around the world so what you're saying is you clearly ex uk is important but you want to encourage Brits to travel further. Exactly. I said 70 yeah. 30. Ideally, now I want the 70 from the ex UK plus the 70 yeah. from the flight crews. I want to go yeah. reach 140%. Um, and I think as we look to 23, we see more stability. Things are normalizing in terms of flights and airports. I mean, we've just been out, seamless experience. So I think the confidence will start to come back with the consumers that actually, yeah. XUK is fantastic, and we have a great range of itineraries there. But you know, people maybe that have sailed virtuos that had a great time first cruise, they then start looking for new itineraries, new destinations to do something a little bit different. And of course, this ship is in the Med next summer. Um, you know, so you don't need to fly six, seven hours to see this. You can fly exactly. an hour and a half to Barcelona to see this from next April. 
And it's so, worth, I would say, it was worth reminding everyone that we have 12 ships deployed in the Med during the summer season. So mm -hmm. we have the largest offering yeah. of uh, Mediterranean yeah. destinations in the world. So um, the the XUK business, I'm uh, really confident they will continue to grow. That's why we're basing uh, new ships as well. Uh, but at the same time, as I said, I see uh, the Med again up and coming. Uh, we used to be really good in selling flying cruiser, you know, before the pandemic. So I see the opportunity to go back to those levels, to those pre-pandemic levels. And uh, in addition to that, there will always be ships, you know, based in the Caribbean. And uh, we have four, uh, plus another ship that will be sailing from New York. So that's a brand new itinerary doing New York right. and New England. Uh, in addition, uh, you know, it's all the winter destination, you know, from uh, the Arabian Gulf to South Africa to South America. So there's a lot going on. And uh, as Steve was saying, now that MSC is a really popular brand in the UK, because many people have had the opportunity to try the ship whilst based in the UK. So yeah. they're sailing from the UK. They've, they've, they've enjoyed their experience. And we have such a... Check some other ships or check some other destinations as well. So, Good I think Vitorza uh, has been kind of a, a trigger. It's like a, it, it, it kind of gave a boost. Yeah. yeah, it gave that confidence first. Yeah, people felt confident again, especially after you know those two horrible years that, that we've had. So it kind of gave that confidence back to the customers, and uh, they they came on board. They enjoyed the experience. Uh, I think you remember me mentioning in the past that we've had we've had so many new to cruise customers. Yeah. So last year, 50% of our customers have never cruised before. So as I said, every cloud has a silver lining. Yeah. So yeah, you've got to make sure they stay. Cruising. You've got to make sure they stay cruising. And Steve, oh, just before uh, we before we leave you, because I know how busy you are. Uh, we've got Wave coming up. I know Antonio, you'd said you weren't sure when Wave was really going to kick in, but Regardless of that, I can't believe MSC are not going to be going all out for Wave. What what have agents of got in store? We will lose it. What have agents got in no, store from MSC? So we will launch our Wave campaign the first week in December. Yeah. Um, and we've done we've done that historically now because what we like to do is get it out there, get it bedded in, get the agents familiar with it, um, so that actually come post Christmas. You know, we're, we're really in great shape and the campaign's kind of bedded down and, and everyone's comfortable and knows what it is. So, you know, Antonio is setting me some very, very, very stretching go. targets, Lucy. <laughs> some numbers that are, you know, huge. That if I think three, four, five years ago, uh, you know, what, what we are achieving and the numbers we're seeing now, even now in November, the booking levels are fantastic. I think you saw the... The um, press statement put out last month, October, MSC globally had the best booking month we've ever had. Yes. Um, and that was both global it's and the UK. We're seeing Ireland come back very strong now. So I'm really confident and we're not seeing a dip. And I think, you know, reading, um, you know, your magazine and other companies, the confidence seems to be there for travel. I think people have had two, three years bumpy, bumpy time. Uh, they want their holiday and maybe the consideration is well I'm not going to do that or I'm not going to do that and the, the cost of living but they want their holiday and I think a cruise offers amazing value they pay their price they know what they're getting they know what's included so once they've paid that they can come on something you know like World Europa they've got the food their entertainment their drinks so you know it's 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 an amazing holiday and I think cruise traditionally through problem periods of financial um, woes and worries in the UK, Cruise has always done very well. So we're super confident that we're going to have our best way ever. Um, details will be revealed shortly, but it's going to be a fabulous campaign. Um, and yeah, bring it on. Well, let's, watch, let's get watch this space. Ready. Watch this space. I'm yes. sure we will cover it. Listen, guys, you're so busy. Look, Antonio's looking at his watch. He's got to be somewhere. Probably, uh, uh, probably needs sure a glass of champagne. They're all calling me as usual. Whilst I I'm know. Doing their Listen, this was a fun one to do. A bit rough and ready, but it gives everybody such a great hey. flavour. We're so grateful. Thank you for your time. Thank you for letting us be first on board. I wish I was with you, but I wish you all the best we for the naming. We wish you were here, Oh, I wish you best for the naming, and I'll see you very soon. Good luck. Thank you, Lucy. I appreciate it. Lots of love, and thanks okay. to all the agents. And 
get those bookings in. Brilliant. All right, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.